series for kind of a walkthrough open house in the top floor of the Clemson Athletics Branding Institute. Uh, but we will start off the press conference with Coach Sweeney. Okay, appreciate it. Uh, well, good to be back um, with everybody. And, you know, so I guess this is our second time in this room, so really, really cool to have a, a nice space. Hopefully it's something that y'all will enjoy and have a, have a little better spot to be able to work. Uh, Larry, you won't have to, like, work out in the car, uh, uh, you know, like I've seen you in, in the past uh, from time to time. So hopefully this will be better for everyone. But great time to start spring practice, man. What a, what a beautiful uh, day, you know, for a first day of, of spring ball. It's always fun to start over and, and uh, you know, build a new team every year. This is what you do is you, you, you start over and, and uh, you know, you got a bunch of new people. And, and, and this year we got some, some you know, new people amongst our staff as well, uh, 15 mid-years, all that. So it's exciting uh, to get going. <clears throat> you get 15 days uh, to actually be on the field and try to maximize each one of those days to, you know, uh, build a good foundation uh, for this team and what we want to accomplish this year. And uh, so... You know we're excited. We've had a we've had a, a busy off season, but you know doing a lot of things. Obviously, since the last time we were together as a team, meetings, uh, you know strength and conditioning, uh, our, our our total off season program, our our all in drills, uh, um, you know just a lot of self evaluation as a, as a as an organization that you know everybody does or should do this time of year, and uh, <clears throat> and then getting everybody on the same page. Uh, obviously, with the change offensively, uh, that's been that's been fun to kind of see it all come together. Um, so we're excited to get get on the field today, and like I said, just day one, uh, but get going. And and uh, I think we got a good group. We got a lot of guys uh, here. Uh, I guess we got about maybe twelve guys that'll be coming in this summer uh, to to add on. But you know, the majority of our team is here, and it's exciting. Again, the fifteen mid years that's that's big to get them here. Uh, we do have several guys that will either be out for spring, limited for spring, you know, different types of things, whether it be just postseason uh, surgical type stuff, um, you know, that, that uh, is going to limit some guys. Uh, Bo Collins, you know, is, is it will be – he'll be – he'll do all the individual. He'll do all of our team, uh, what we call team separate uh, he won't do any good on good or have any contact or anything like that. But it, I'm glad he'll be able to at least be out and to work on some timing and rhythm uh, with the quarterbacks uh, this spring. But but coming off his shoulder surgery, um, uh, Brody Kahn, uh, he he's had, he actually has had both shoulders had to be uh, fixed. He had one, and then six weeks later had another one. But he 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 will be able to punt only <clears throat> this spring. Uh, Sheridan. Uh, you know, he, he as y'all know, uh, wasn't able to play in the in the uh, uh, Orange Bowl. Um, and he was dealing with that ab injury, so we did that surgery. Uh, so he's he will be uh, limited. You know, hopefully we'll be able to do, uh, you know, as we go through spring, be able to do individual and things like that and be able to get some drill work on the field. But, um, you know, no competitive stuff. Matthew Maloney coming off the ACL uh, surgery from the season. He's... <laughs> He will be uh, out. Uh, Rook Ororo had hit him and Peyton Page. You know, both had their shoulders operated on uh, postseason, so they'll be uh, uh, out for spring. Walker Parks had his. You know, he played. Shoot, Walker probably played four games with an ankle like that. I mean, it was unbelievable that he was able to finish and play the way he did. And. So we knew it was, we knew it was going to have to be something uh, we fix after the season. So he looks great. Uh, he's doing really really well uh, with his recovery and range of motion. But uh, he'll be out this spring, as will uh, Marcus Tate, who who you know tore his knee and had the surgery there. So, uh, but he'll be out there doing individuals well. Uh, so you'll see those guys in a limited role, but but no competitive work. Uh, but I think that'll end up being a blessing for us, you know, with Marcus. We know what Marcus, uh, who he is. Same thing with Walker. So it's going to really kind of force the issue with some other guys. Uh, Adam Randall, uh, you know, he's not going to be fully released until uh, just after spring, just after the spring game. Uh, so he <clears throat> he played the last few games. Not not his knee that he hurt, but the other knee had a little uh, just not a major deal, but just uh, had to kind of clean that up and so he's he's going to be uh 
out for the spring. Uh, but he's doing well. And then uh, Xavier Thomas, you know, he'll do all the indie work, uh, some of the team separate work uh, as he continues to come back, fully recover from, <clears throat> you know, where they had to put the bigger screw uh, in his foot. So, uh, you know, we got we got kind of a mash unit there of guys that that'll be, like I said, either limited, participate partly here or there. Paul Tyson uh, had a had a, a thumb injury. And uh, hopefully, after spring break, he'll be able to do some things. Maybe the maybe the second half of spring there. Um, and uh, John Williams you know, is going to be limited here to start off. He had to have his appendix out, uh, so you know, kind of getting him back uh, going as well. Troy Stilato, uh still not quite a hundred percent recovering from his ACL surgery, and then uh, Jalen Jalen Phillips as well had to have. Uh, ankle surgery after the season. So, you know, it was a lot of guys uh, dealing with different things. But, again, some will be involved in various roles throughout. Some will be completely out uh, as we go through. But uh, all heading in a, in a good direction. And these are all just old injuries, things from the season that we needed to take care of uh, and uh, knew about. And then the, the last thing is uh, <clears throat> I'm sure all of y'all have heard about Jeremiah Trotter's mom, uh, Tammy. And uh, – you know, she was diagnosed with breast cancer, I guess, just uh, before he came to Clemson and has battled for the last couple of years. Um, and just a, just, a really, just a really sad situation. You know, a, 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 just a beautiful uh, person inside and out, a beautiful mom, a great wife, um, and uh, just a, you know, just a very, very tough time. Uh, uh, so, you know, Jeremiah's here. He actually came back, I think, Thursday night. He got back in town and, um, you know, just kind of wanted to get back going. So he's out here today. He'll practice today. But uh, we'll be going home, going home on Friday, and, and, and funeral will be on uh, Saturday. Um, but, uh, man, these are, just, these are just tough, tough things to deal with. Um, and, you know, breast cancer is, is a it's, – it's just – all cancer is horrible, uh, but um, you know it's something that uh, affects a lot of people. And um, you know, just thankful though that I got a chance to to know her, and uh, you know all the great things that she instilled in in uh, you know Josiah and Jeremiah, and and um, so just ask that everyone keep them and their family and, and your thoughts and prayers. Uh, you know, Jeremiah Senior, man, this is a, this is a tough time for him. You know, they've been partners for a long time. And um, so, uh, but it'll be a great celebration of her life uh, on uh, Saturday. She was truly, like I said, just a, a beautiful person inside and out. Um, but just <clears throat> doing everything we can as a program to put our arms around Jeremiah and, and help him, you know, just one day at a time. What's the, uh, what's the biggest thing you're excited about seeing from this, this group of men years? Uh, you know, I mean, the, a few of them I got to see at the bowl, which was kind of cool, uh, but really just just kind of where they are. I mean, you know, you never really know till you get on the practice field and you start coaching guys. How do they how do they grab a hold of things in the meeting room and can they translate it to the practice field? Uh, but I just want to see them go out there and compete. I want to see where they are, see how they match up. Uh, I'm excited about it. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a few more, like I said, coming in this summer that, that I'll be excited about as well. But, you know, it's going to be fun. First couple of days are in shorts, um, but we'll ramp it up on Wednesday, uh, start getting into some pad work. and <clears throat> But just kind of where they are, see them compete. And I think all the mid-years, with the exception of Paul Tyson, um, I think all the, all those guys are ready to go, you know. So, um, just kind of get a feel for kind of who they are on the field. With uh, with Garrett arriving, two part question: <clears throat> Can you? I mean, how how do you prepare the guys before you get them on the field to kind of get them, you know, involved in the offense? And then this isn't something you really <clears throat> had to deal with since uh, Chad Morris got here. How excited are you to to actually get out on the field and kind of? put that in, in action today? <clears throat> well, I mean, when Chad left, you know, Tony um, and, and Jeff taking over there um, in in uh, 14 or the start of 15. Uh, so we, we've had – it's been, been since then, since we've really had transition. Uh, 
but uh, you know, there's a lot. I mean, we've been we've been going since the end of January with meetings. <clears throat> you know, now the way the rules are, you can do walkthroughs. Uh, so you know, as a part of our mat drills, you know, we we've done walkthroughs. We've had a lot of installation meetings. So. Uh, you know, you prepare for this first practice probably more than any practice, you know, all year because, you, you know, it's like, all right, you, you, you've been, we've installed a lot. Um, and then you have, you know, pretty much all of February to meet as a staff to get on the same page as coaches and, and you know, everybody speak the same language, you know, because that's, that's the biggest thing in, in the initial stages is, you know, what do you, what do you call two by two? What do you call three by one? What do you call three by two? You know, everybody calls it something. So learn, you know, what's four verts? You know what's smash? What's what's your quick game? What do you call six man protection? Five man protection? Five quick? Five drop back? What do you, what are those things called? What do you call inside zone? What do you call the outside zone? What do you call the counter? What do you call the power? You know, I mean, everybody can the football people can look at it and say, well, we know what that is, but all right, we got to all get on the same page page because everybody's got different language, and <clears throat> so kind of collaborating in the last month and and really honing in. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing with Garrett, you know, it's not going to be about trying to see how much we can install. I think it's just going to be about getting everybody on the same page, getting a good foundation in place this spring. Uh, you know, we got six receivers that, that aren't really available, you know, um, with with Bo, Adam, um, uh, Stellato, and then you got three coming in the summer, and Roan and Tyler and Tink. So, <clears throat> you know, you got, but you still gotta, you still gotta install what we need to because we got backs. Everybody needs it, and uh, so I guess we got five scholarship guys out there uh, this spring. That, and then we got, you know, good walk, Hampton Earl, H Hamp Green. Those guys will be able to contribute and help us as well. But you got to get it in. So just a good foundation um, uh, from a from a base offense standpoint. And that's, I think, the biggest objective is coming out of spring, feeling good about what we do install. Because if we can get the base down, then we'll be able to build from there. <clears throat> and then defensively, you know, it's really just you know, learning from, from our season, uh, getting everybody in the right spot. We got some really, really good players that aren't going to really be participating in spring, like Rook and Peyton Page and XT. You know, so, but that's like, okay, where's Greg? Where's Zaire? Where's Cade uh, Denhoff? You know, and really seeing the Jaheen and seeing where those guys are, these new guys that have rolled in here, TJ, Peter Woods, Seth Island, Burley. You know, so it's exciting. Uh, but just getting the base down, the base foundational pieces, uh, offensively, defensively, and special teams. Do you give us a glimpse of maybe what uh, the offensive line will look like uh, personnel-wise with those two guys out to start off the gate? Well, uh, you're going to be out there today, so you'll get a chance to see for yourself. Uh, you know, cause we'll, we'll start out with some special teams and some indie and, you know, we'll – in the past, y'all have seen us kind of do a tempo period. You know, we, we most days we'll do a tempo period, and I think today we're actually doing that tempo period against the defense. We'll, we'll just just a little fastball, good and good, try to get about 10, 12 plays run uh, in a quick five-minute period. But, uh, you know, you'll see Blake Miller out there. Uh, he, he, he kind of finished up there at right tackle and really like where he's at. I mean, he's going to be, a uh, we think, a – a really special player. I mean, it's hard to start as a true freshman, and uh, <clears throat> you know he certainly wasn't perfect, but he he's he made a lot of strides, um, and so excited about you know where he's at. And then um, over at left tackle, Tristan will get his opportunity. You know, Marcus Tate gives us a lot of flexibility because Marcus Tate can play left tackle. Uh, you know, we got to get when we get through the summer and get into camp and we really figure out who the best five are and then who's the sixth guy and the seventh guy. You know, Marcus is a guy that gives you a lot of flexibility because obviously he can play guard, but he can play left tackle and play right tackle. And, and so who is that guy? Like last year we thought Blake was the fifth best guy. So we moved Walker to guard. Um, and so that's kind of where we were. Obviously you got Putnam uh, in there and uh, he's – He's he's in a good spot, and then Mitchell Mays I think took a big he took a big step forward finishing those uh, what he started last four games for us and really did a nice job. Um, so you'll see him in there, and then <clears throat> probably uh, today probably a combination of Trent Howard and Ryan Lenthicum. You know that's kind of where we are from just just guys that can really go be you know execute f functionally as a football player. So you'll see. Lenthicum and, and uh, uh, Trent, 
kind of working guard and center, and both kind of working some center, and then you're going to see a lot of Dietrich, uh, you know, kind of where he's at. He's going to get his opportunity with that first group at guard as well. Um, uh, John is is going to be, you know, he's limited right now, so I'm not sure when we'll get him back, you know, dealing with this appendix deal. Um, so that's kind of where it'll start. Sadler, Sadler's going to start out there. We'll probably start him as the second left tackle. Uh, we'll probably go out there with Tristan first, Sadler second, working left tackle. But Sadler is a guy that we really think can play anywhere. Um, we're real excited about him. And, and like I said, he, he probably would not have redshirted last year had he not got hurt. Uh, but, you know, just going out there today, he'll probably work with the second, uh, le second group left tackle. Just we got to we got to get everybody going, and uh, but he'll be a guy that'll cross train, and I think when it's all said and done, we'll we'll be able to play wherever. And so again, um, <clears throat> who's the best five? And if that means moving somebody, then you know we'll do that. Um, but so it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good opportunity for a lot of these guys. It's gonna be a good opportunity for Tristan. A really good opportunity for Sadler. Great opportunity for Dietrich and Trent Howard and and uh, Linthicum. You know, these guys uh, to step up and, and see what they're going to do. You know, Tucker's a guy that's been around here and, and I mean, you know, hadn't really kind of grabbed a hold of the opportunity yet. And so we'll see, we'll see what he does. Uh, but it's a veteran group, that's for sure. We only lost one guy. And, uh, you know, J Mack, and I, I, he performed well at the combine this week. What did he run? 499. So I think he's, he thinks he's officially a D lineman now. Uh, so um, it's a good group back. But again, wish Parks and Tate were out there. Um, but we're very confident in who they are, um, and so I think in the end this will be a, this will be a blessing for us to really develop a, a very good group and, and get to a point that we probably hadn't been in a couple years. Yeah, so you look at Blake at all on the left side? Or do you just yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. You had a, a great run of kickers from <clears throat> Catanzaro to Hugo to Potter. Um, how tight do you think the, the competition will be at kicker? Um, you know, I don't know right now. How tight it'll be because we haven't been out there yet. But I mean, Gunn is we we signed him because we think he's special and and uh, you know he's 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 got a cannon and uh, so we'll see uh, you know how where Liam is you know we'll see how he gets out there and competes and uh, Kastner and Morton we got a we got a we got a little group they'll go get out there. I mean. The one thing about kicker, it's there's no gray area, right? Uh, it either goes through the pipes or it doesn't, so it's not very subjective. Uh, we'll we'll see, but we we feel good about Robert Gunn. I mean, I think he's a, a, a special talent. I mean, I really do, um, and you know, so but you got to go do it. So as far as where we are competition wise, I mean, you know, we'll see as the spring goes. Uh, we got both our snappers back. I'm excited about that. And uh, I think I think the, comp the competition is going to be at punter. Um, you know, with with Jack coming off a red shirt, I think he's kind of mentally kind of got himself uh, in a good spot. It was really good for him last year. Uh, you know, he had we, I think he got we punted him in the ACC championship game. He bombed it. I think that was good for him. And then obviously Aiden got a lot of experience last year. So um, you know, we'll we'll, uh, we'll see. What do you think so far from what you've observed of Garrett Riley strictly as a quarterback development coach and um, around the SEC and ACC, there have been several <laughs> offensive coordinators that have bolted for the NFL. Are you, are you worried about the demands of college football coaching kind of making coaches leave for the pros? Uh, man, uh, okay. All right. You tested me. All right, so the first one was uh, his development as a quarterback coach. I mean, I think he's he's uh, first of all he's he's awesome in the meetings. I, I really enjoy his demeanor. Uh, he's he's the same guy every day. He's very he's very bright, very consistent. Um, you know, he doesn't act like he's got all the answers or anything like that. I mean, he he's he's really uh, he's very confident. You know, I, I love that about him, um, and, and he should be. He's been very successful, but. The quarterback that he had at SMU, I think his name was Bouchel. Is that Bouchel? Bouchel. And, you know, you saw his impact on him when he was there. And then, you know, he goes into TCU. And, and ironically, Chandler Morse, Chad Morse's son won the job in camp. I was just with Sonny Dykes like a week ago when we was talking about this. But Chad Morse's um, son 
uh, won the job in camp, got hurt, I guess the first game. And Duggan, uh, you know, the guy ended up winning the Davey O'Brien. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I think all you can really base the answer on is just a guy's track record. And uh, he's he's got a good track record when it comes to developing quarterbacks. So I think he's he's um, – He's got a good knack for that. He's been around a bunch of good ones. Um, and, uh, you know, that's the first part of it. And then I think that's the second thing you asked was about the NFL. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, it's there's no question that, you know, where we are in college football right now from a calendar standpoint, it's crazy. I mean, it's just a – it's a – it's especially for, um, you know, the assistant coach. Um, you know, because it's just a, it's a, there's just, you know, if you, and, and it depends on really, I guess, who you're working for too. Um, so, uh, you know, it's not a surprise to see a lot of guys that have, have made that move just because, you know, uh, when football's over, football's over, right? You're not dealing with recruiting and, and all those type of stuff. So, um, and right now, you know, there's just a lot of, uncertainty and a lot of chaos in college football so I'm not surprised by it uh, but I'm not worried about it um, as far as you know guys doing it if that's what they want to do uh, I'm not like I said I'm not sitting around worried about that but I'm not surprised by it just maturity you know you just want to see a guy um, you know learn and apply the lessons from last year. Uh, just take that next step, you know. I mean, he's freshman All-American. They don't give sophomore All-American. So, uh, you know, you just 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 take another step from a maturation standpoint in his in his just his overall you know total development. Uh, he needs to get stronger in the weight room. You know, get a little bit more committed nutritionally. You know, become a little bit, and, and, and you know, he's he's very like technically, he was a pretty advanced kid coming in here, but really polishing up on some things uh, from a technical standpoint, and uh, and then and then starting to you know become a little bit of a leader. You know, that's a position that that he's he's uh, he thrived in. He came in, he ended up winning the job, and uh, but he just just taking that next step and being a dominant player uh, day in and day out and just physically and mentally maturing a little bit. And I think you'll see that in him. I, I've already seen that in him as well. But, um, you know, just being a little bit more of a leader as well. Speaking of receivers, how, how big is this spring for Cole, just continuing to learn the position? <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it's big. Uh, he obviously has a lot of confidence coming out of out of the season last year. We're really fortunate we we're able to redshirt him, um, and then for him to be able to to get the experience that he did that he had, but also have success uh, is a huge positive for him. So, you know, Cole, Antonio, Adam, Bo, uh, that's kind of the inspector. You know, th those five guys right there, you know, should should really, you know kind of butter our bread a little bit, if you will. I mean, that's kind of where it should start. And then, you know, we, eventually if we can get Stilato healthy, uh, he could help us. I mean, he was having a great fall camp and when he tore his ACL. So hopefully we'll get him back in there. And then obviously you got Tyler and Tink and Ronan and all those guys coming. Noble, Noble's here this spring. Um, super excited about seeing him. I mean, he, he's, I mean, he's a, he's a, he, he looks the part. And he can move the way you, you ought to be able to move. We loved him in the recruiting process. He's looked great in our off-season program. So anxious to see him get out there. Um, but, uh, you know, we've got a good group. But it's big. It's a big opportunity for Cole. You know, again, with, with Bo out, with Adam out, with Stilato out, um, and some of those other guys not here, you know, the opportunity for Spectre and Cole and Antonio is, is big. You know, this spring, it's really big. And with the scholarship numbers at linebacker, keen to get Jamal Anderson, D. Creighton in early to get them kind of advanced toward being depth contributors, perhaps. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we've you know our number we we we've changed our number. It used to be nine, and uh, now it's eight. You know, so we're actually kind of right at our number uh, scholarship wise. Uh, but we. Um, um, 
so we're in a good spot. But yeah, definitely, you know, get for spring practice for sure. You know, getting those guys in here. I mean, they both are. I think they're as advertised. I mean, just watching them move around, watching how they've kind of handled themselves in the walkthroughs. They haven't seemed overwhelmed. You know, they're 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 different. You know, uh, Jamal is. Man, this kid, this kid is a this is a big time athlete. This dude is smooth, man. He can he can run, change direction. I think he can do a lot of things. He's got really good growth potential. He's long, uh, and then D's a thumper. You know, D is does is uh, got a great body, and you know both of those guys remind you of the guys that we have there. Um, it's a great room. It's a really really good room. I'm 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 very excited about our group. You know. There's not many teams out there that have, you know, Barrett Carter and Trotter and Woodass, you know, uh, with your first group. And then Woodass, you know, when we're – if we're in a, a, a true three-linebacker set, we'll be your guy. But Woodass is going to work Will Backer as well. So we'll – which naturally a transition for him. But, man, uh, Dudley, uh, we, were able, we were able to redshirt him. Man, Dudley, Dudley is – Dudley's – Dudley has got a chance to be a really good player. I'm like, super excited about him. Um, you know, I haven't haven't seen as much of Kobe, just because he was on the scout team all year. I haven't seen as much of him in a competitive environment, you know, situation yet. Uh, so he's really worked hard. He's gotten strong. He's changed his body a little bit. So see him out there, and then, you know, Jamal and D uh, in the mix. It's going to be a good group. It's going to be a really good group. Season, there's a lot of carryover uh, or a lot of similarities. Between yeah I mean you know again the biggest thing is just getting the the terminology the same but but um, the biggest thing is, is, your, is your outside receivers like we would always cross train our guys you know with the X and the Z the two and the nine uh, you know depending on what we called them whatever year it was but um, you would always cross train guys whereas now you know, those guys, you, you know, you, when you get into game planning and things like that, you put guys wherever you want them. But as a base rule, those guys, they don't switch sides. So you, so they cross-train naturally, which I like that because the ball gets distributed, uh, you know, differently too. And uh, so, you know, that, that, that X is on the next play is a Z. And that Z on the next play is an X because, you know, the ball's left hash, right hash, you know, whatever. So uh, then your slots make the adjustments. Uh, that's 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 part of it, and then systematically, you know, just how you signal things uh, is a little different. You know, you put a, put a little bit more on the quarterback from a signal standpoint. Uh, it's really simple. Uh, we've simplified some things, um, but you know, again, and then and then there's a lot of things that we've done that have been really good uh, for a long time uh, that that you want to kind of hang on to, but. Um, Biggest thing is just getting on the same page terminology wise because you know he's got to be able to call it, you know, freely, you know, and uh, what we might call stick, he calls this, you know, and it really doesn't matter. What does stick mean? No, well, it only means this because that's what we learned it as, right? So, so just getting everybody, what do we call four verts? Everybody runs four verts. Well, what do you call it? What he calls it, what we've called it. And then kind of getting everybody on the same page. Uh, your cadence, you know, um, is, is a little different, you know, in the rhythm of, of what you do cadence-wise. Uh, so there, there's a lot of things, you know, that, that are the exact same. I mean, again, inside zone's inside zone. It doesn't matter. You can turn on TCU and watch the inside zone. You can watch Clemson inside zone. But we called it this. Now we're going to call it this. And, uh, and then just – and so it's been fun, you know, going through all the cuts and, you know, watch his cuts. And then we watched the same play at Clemson and, you know, just the coaching points and things like that. But, um, you know, just I think I think we can play really fast uh, just because of how we're going to signal and, you know, kind of the keys and indicators that the players have. Uh, and then, again, as a base rule, guys not swapping sides, uh, you know, having to kind of, Learn, really learn the whole concept. I think that's a, a positive. Graham has talked a few times about the unequal revenue model the ACC is considering. Is that something that say, say that again? The unequal revenue distribution model, where you know, kind of rewarding more money, more percentages of it to teams that are more successful. Is that something you've discussed with him, or do you think that's maybe a good model for the ACC? To yeah, I'll let that. I'll just leave that to him. Uh, I'll let him. I'll let him handle all that. Um, yeah. I've, 
I mean, we I know about it and I've heard the conversation, but yeah, I, I'll let him I'll let him worry about that. What do you want to see from the quarterbacks, both in terms of learning the system and development? In this game? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, I'm super excited to see CV because uh, I literally have not been on the field with him yet, right? I mean, you know, he didn't go the bowl game with us, so this will be – today will be the first time that I've been on the field with him. We've had walkthroughs, but, you know, we've not been able to uh, run routes and things like that. So I'm, I'm excited to, to see him out there. I'm sure he'll be nervous. Um, and then, you know, Cade looks great. You know, he's right at 200 pounds. Y'all y'all will see him, you know, uh, physically. He, he looks really good. And I think he wants to be about 208 maybe by August. That's kind of his goal. So he's really progressed well from when he got here at about 180. Uh, so he, he looks really, really good. But I just want to see him really take command. I want to see him lead, you know. Uh, I want to see us – you know, like I said, Garrett's not overwhelming them with scheme. You know, we're trying to get really good um, at the basics and the foundation um, of the offense. So I want to see those guys really take command, um, you know, really bring great energy day in and day out and assert themselves as, as great leaders. And, you know, I want to see CV get out there and compete. You know, I hate Paul. It's not going to be able to go. Uh, but, uh, you know, Hunter, uh, he battled a little bit of a foot sprain coming out of mat drills, but uh, Hunter Ham, so we'll get him out there as well. And then I want to see Trent, you know. Uh, this is the first time I'm going to really get a chance to see Trent take reps. Uh, so it'll be it's going to be fun for all those guys. But just execute and show that they that they have a good grasp of, uh, of what we're doing. Obviously, you got to see Cade have that week prior to the bowl or the, that month, I guess, to be, be the leader of the offense. I mean, how much do you feel like he established himself as that in that period of time, and how important is this spring? Yeah, I think he, he took full advantage of it as a freshman, you know. I mean, the, the one thing that I – one of the things I really like about this team is I really think that our best players on this team are incredibly committed. I really do. I mean, you know, we, we, we've had – some years you have some teams where some of the times your best players are, are you know, you'd like for them to be a little bit of a better leader, a little bit more committed. Uh, but this team, the best players are really passionate and they're really committed and they're really good leaders. And Cade is an example of that. I mean, this guy is super competitive, incredibly committed, uh, really truly believes in, you know, what we do here and how we do it. And, and uh, you know, he's a winner. I mean, he's a natural leader. Uh, so, you know, it's it's hard. It's a different dynamic when you take over as a freshman late and you kind of have that, that new role. But now having an off season, going in the weight room, being out on the field, Saturdays, throwing balls to the guys, getting the guys together and things like that. I mean, he's had an opportunity to really assert himself that way. And and um, it's been fun to watch. I mean, he's 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 in a good spot. Chris, speaking of leaders, uh, Will Shipley missed last spring. Um, that was a good opportunity for Mafa, but – Seems like that was torturous for Will not being able to suit up. How excited is he about this? Game? Yeah, he's excited, and you know he he's uh, a guy that has worked hard this off season too to get his body. You know he had some he was battling some tendonitis and things like that coming out of the season, but he's worked really hard uh, to to be able to get out there and compete. And so uh, that's a really good group right there. I mean those two guys. You know, I think have a chance to be, you know, a special, special group. Uh, they both have done some really good things um, in their first two years, but there's a lot more there for both of those guys. And I think you'll see that for sure this year. And so, we'll, you know, we feel good about them. So I'm excited. Let's see where, where where's Dominique, where's Keith Adams. Uh, we got, uh, you know, a couple more guys rolling in here this summer, uh, you know, and Jay and, and Jarvis, so we'll see where they are as well. So it's going to be, it's going to be a fun group when when everybody gets here and all together. What do you want to see out of the Cougar this off season as a whole? Uh, same thing I was say uh, saying about Antonio. I want to see him just just maturity. You know, I, I I thought he took a step back last year. I don't think physically he he was in a good place. He 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 was hurt a lot. You know, the one thing I'll say about Makuba, he, he's one of the toughest kids we have on this team. But he, I just don't think he had his body in the best possible spot last year. And so I just, and he's already he's already improved in that area. He's about eight or nine pounds heavier right now than he was when we finished the season. So, 
just physically getting his body in a better spot. And then, uh, you know, he, he's got he's to be more disciplined, more focused. Um, that There's just no question. I mean, he made some mistakes last year that, um, you know, if he just is a little bit more disciplined uh, with his eyes, with his technique, uh, you know, he's in a better position. So, uh, but – and then I think physically, again, he's got to he, – he's got to – really assert himself in this offseason more than he did last year to to give himself the best possible opportunity to have the type of season that he wants to have. He's a really good player. He's a dynamic player. Um, but, you know, and then getting healthy because, like I said, he had he had the elbow, he had knee, he had, he had a little bit of everything last year. But I think it starts with just really truly maturing um, and really being committed nutritionally, you know, strength conditioning, the whole deal. What was the evaluation process like for you and Wes coming out of his first year? Uh, just going through everything and, and, you know, evaluating all the calls, evaluating uh, all the personnel, uh, situational stuff. Uh, you know, I mean, sometimes the stats don't really sh- kind of show what you want. Sometimes it may show certain things, but it's still not what you want it to be. Um, but... You know, I think we're in a really good place in that room. Uh, I love the staff. I love the coaches. You know, Wes has a great grasp on it, and uh, you know, we know we know what 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 went right and what didn't, and what we got to do to get better. And uh, the number one thing is pass defense. You know, it's simple as that. And uh, so we think we've got good players. We think we're going to have more depth than we've had, but we've got to we've got to execute a little bit better. And uh, so that'll be a big focus for us. If we're better with pass defense and we're better with our pass offense, uh, we're gonna have a we're gonna have another great season. This will be your 15th spring as head coach. Are you as excited today as you were 15 years ago? I, absolutely, man. It's uh, it, I was just telling um, so, some folks that earlier today. I mean, it's it's just like. I mean, this day never gets old when you get when you get a chance to actually get back out on the field and and start over and you know build a new team. I mean, you know this is and it goes so fast. You know what, eight nine months, this thing is over. You know we've got the results. You know and you know last year we were eleven and three and you know this time last year we were kind of getting ready, getting going. You don't really know what's coming. Well, hey, we won the league. We're eleven and three and and you know had another good year. Uh, some some teams maybe have have. We've had some better teams along the way, but man, I can just tell you our our program's never been better, and and we are really in a good spot. But it's it's always exciting to get started and to just see if you can put it all together. This is my favorite part is is that that you know challenge of building a new team and seeing if you can help this guy get to another point. You know, like to me, I was with K, I had dinner with KJ Henry last night, and like seeing KJ. And, you know, where he was this time last year and why he came back and what we were trying to do and now to see him where he is and just see him maximize his career here academically, athletically, and, you know, just his growth and maturity as a man, that's what I love. You know, I love that transformation. And, and so every year you start over and you, you kind of figure out where guys are and how do we take the next step. And they change. Young people grow. And the reason we've been so successful here for a long time is, is because these guys have grown up and they buy in. And then it becomes their responsibility to kind of pass that down, you know, uh, the leaders. And so now, okay, those guys are gone. Man, who's those new guys? And them taking that next step from a transformation standpoint, leadership, um, uh, it's fun. It's fun because it's new dynamics. I mean, you get out on the field today and it's the first time we've been out there as a team. And it's just, it's all of a sudden a guy that didn't really have a voice last year or two years ago. Next thing you know, he's got this voice. He's got this confidence. Uh, he's got this skill set now. He's got the fundamentals are better. I mean, there's, there's a, it's, it's, it's fun, you know, to see that. And, uh, but it's a long year ahead, and this is this is just one of those days that that you look forward to every year. Is it a bummer to have this many guys out? I think y'all banged up last year. Uh, well, I mean, it's just, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, you wish you had everybody, but I think, like I said, I think I'm pretty confident in Rook. 
uh, I think he's going to be all right. Uh, I think old Peyton Page, I feel really good about Peyton Page. So, you know, it's it's not it's not a bad thing, um, you know, because now we get a chance to see Peter Woods right out of the gate, right? Uh, we get to see – Somebody's the Kate Parts. I don't think it's going to be there today. His mom, his mom it, it was he had to he had to get home. She was not doing well. Uh, she was sick, so he went home to check on her. But he'll be back. He he we had a he was at the dinner last night too. So, um, but Kate Part and Trey and those guys. I mean, it's a good opportunity for them. Uh, I'm excited to see Greg Williams. I can't wait to see him and Kate. Zaire, kind of how's that, you know, I'm so excited to see Maskell in this role now as being, like, the guy. Uh, it's it's going to be a lot of fun, you know, and see how they how they take to it. But, yeah, I mean, I wish, you know, we had Bo out there, but I, I think the biggest thing is we got to get – let's get Bo healthy. Uh, let's get that shoulder healthy. Let's be – I wish I had Adam. I, that's a bummer. Uh, but – you know, it's kind of just a nothing major, but just a little so like, so something was sticking on his knee that they had to kind of clean up. But you know, he'll be out. Um, so I definitely wish I had him out there. But you know, they're not going they're not going to hand out any trophies this spring. But we'll we'll be able to get done what we need to do foundationally as a team uh, with the guys we have. Speaking of one opportunity, I guess Toriano, Jaden was shared and out. Just another opportunity for them to kind of build upon last year. Yeah. Yeah, we're sharing it out for sure. I mean, you know, Jaden, Jaden's going to end up having to have some surgery as well. You know, he's got to have that shoulder fixed. Uh, he played, you know, all last last part of the season with that brace on, but he's he wants to get through. He wants to go compete. You know, we could have we could have we could have gone ahead and cleaned him up, but you know, we wanted to wait and let him get at least the first half of spring so he could really get out there and compete, and then we'll probably. We'll probably have to clean his his shoulder up, his other shoulder after spring break, and uh, so he probably won't be available for the spring game. But that way, he can we can get him back and ready to go for really all of our summer training and stuff. But uh, but some of these guys that we went ahead and did the surgeries on, you know, like I said, Marcus Tate, you didn't really have a choice. Walker Park Parks didn't have a choice. But you know, we we're very comp Rook XT. We're very confident in those guys <coughs> and uh, who they are. But, um, you know, probably the biggest one that is Adam. I wish we'd had him out there this spring, but but he'll be back soon. With Stilato, I think it's about seven months since he got injured. Is he, are you about where you would like for him to be? Or is he uh, we did the surgery in September, I guess. So what's that? October, November, December. January. Yeah, so he's about six months. You know, it's it's you know not not really uh, trying to rush him or anything like that, but. He he's you just never know you know some guys some guys respond really really well and you know are, are back quicker than others um, so he's just he's just not quite where he needs to be you know yet so they're just going to keep progressing him. Fifteen years for you, how many years for the hat? This hat? That hat. And what's the story? Why, why always that hat? I don't know. That's a good one. I, I've got I've got my original hat. I wear it every now and then from '03. That's it's got just the purple bib, the white hat. Uh, I don't know. I just I don't know. I like routine. Uh, what's that? I just thought you had a closet full of those. Hats. No, it's only one. If y'all find them, I'd wear a new one if I could get one. Uh, every now and then I wash it. I just throw it in the shower with me and wet it down and hang it out to dry. Uh, but I don't I don't turn it into the laundry. Uh, I just put some hot water on it and hang it up. But, yeah, if y'all can get me another one, I'll wear a new one. But it's the only one. But just like the fit, it's a nice hat, dry fit. Uh, but, yeah, I just, I don't know. I like routine, tradition. Um, it's got a lot of wins. Got a lot of wins. This group's about to head upstairs to the top floor of the Clemson Athletics Training Institute. What was kind of your vision for it, and how have you seen it benefit the young men in the program so far? Oh, man, it's been great. Um, you know, this has been a, a multi-purpose uh, project. You know, obviously to be able to have a, a really good media space, uh, I think that's been needed here for a long time. So glad we we're able to get that. And then um, we we built a new NFL locker room. Uh, so our players, you know, like KJ, he's already told me he's going to stay here all summer. Uh, so for him to be able to have a locker and to be able to train right here and, and take advantage of all this, I think that's great for our former players. Uh, so when they do come back, they've got a place to change, shower, all that. And then we use that 
also when we do our photo shoots and things like that where guys can you know dress out and, and change um, and then the biggest thing is the production studios up top you know being a, we, 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 there's there's a couple of different production studios uh, it, when you do these photo shoots these things are massive and there's a ton of setup uh, that goes into all that stuff and so to being able to have the lighting being able to have you know a lot of time people roll the white paper out to be able to have it already built in it just makes us much more efficient uh, recruiting ready all the time if you will but also for our players to be able to use that stuff you know to to for some, some things that they may be interested in uh, CD's office is up there We've got a board, kind of a board room. We got a podcast room, uh, which is really cool. So it's just a space where you know guys can be creative and they can uh, uh, you know achieve what they want to achieve. And as we labeled it the Clemson Athletic Branding Institute, uh, I just went, well, all right, we'll call it the Cab, and uh, I just felt like it fit in that you know what does a cab do? It gives you a lift to your destination, but you got to pay the toll. Right. You know, you got to put the work in. Right. And so it's not a free ride. Uh, so that's kind of that was kind of the, the the story behind it. But it's a great facility. You guys are going to love it. We also uh, Alex Bean and we kind of created a, a, a little bit more of our applied science space over here where we do, you know, track all their movements and stuff. Uh, that's right off the weight room. That's a little bit more convenient, just connected to the weight room there. Uh, we've got our NFL scout room. Uh, as well where all the NFL scouts you know come and, and study our guys so it's a it's a it's really a great facility uh, super excited to get it opened up and and uh, it's gonna make us better Coach, appreciate it. okay Coach. appreciate it thank y'all